Alright people, so pretty much just a basic episode of Monday Night Raw. Had a, maybe a few good things in there, a couple of good things. But even if there is one, two, three good things in there, it's like still, the, the majority of the show is still shit. Now if it was two hours long and there was two or three good things, you know, maybe it would be like, oh, it's an okay show, it was only two hours. But three hours is just way too much. I mean, it's fucking horrible staying through three hours of, of shit. It, it, it's just torture. So we get the show started off with Cena and Rusev cutting a promo. You know, if Cena comes out there, d does his normal PG stick, you know, oh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick Rusev's ass. Yeah, you know, I'm going to kick his ass because I'm the best of all time. And if you knock me down, I'm just going to get right back up and keep fighting. You know, just normal ass, you know, normal uh, what you would, you know, generic, generically expect from a top guy. Just nothing out of the ordinary from Cena. You know, just his normal fucking promo right there. You know, and then he gets all pumped up when he's like, I'm the best of all time. I'm the kick some ass at, at Fastlane. You know, just not, nothing good. You know, sometimes he'll throw in a good joke like when he said Rusev was 69 and ho. But but nothing here really. Then, um, then Rusev comes out in Lana. And then Rusev's like, oh, you think you're the man, Cena? Or actually, Lana's like, oh, you think you're the man? Well, actually, Rusev's the, the super athlete, Rusev. It's like, come on, can we get something original? Something like, you know, just a totally generic, original, non-original, my bad, non-original promo here. You know, basically, with Cena coming out saying, I'm the, I'm the best, I'm going to kick your ass. Then Rusev comes out and says, no, I'm the best, and I'm going to kick your ass, because I'm a, I'm a super athlete. It's just a bunch of bullshit. And then we get a brawl. And I mean, the brawl, I guess it wasn't horrible. But I mean, you're looking for for more than a one-minute brawl to kind of build to your match. I mean, it didn't do... It didn't build to the match. What, Cena threw him into the fucking LED lights two times? Well, I mean, come on. It's not even that good. He slammed him on the... Clotheslined him on the, st uh, on the stage. I mean, I guess that was decent. But I mean, still, I didn't feel like it was a proper brawl or not even close to a proper promo to build to this match. And then we get a Dean Ambrose. I thought this was kind of funny. Dean Ambrose does a new segment here. I think that... Sometimes they come up with a lot of good ideas, but I think they could do more with them. Like, remember when Dean Ambrose was walking to Raw when it was snowing and when Raw was snowed out? I mean, I thought that was funny, but I think they could do more with this. I think they could take it to a next another level. I mean, he was in there for 30, minute, 30 seconds, you know, saying shit. But I think, you know, they could take it to another level, do more with it, make it kind of funnier, make it better. But I thought it was still kind of a cool idea there. Just wanted to, you know, add my comment in there, though. Then we get Ambrose defeating Luke Harper. Not not very good match here. I'll give it one and a half out of five stars. He had a few good moves in here. You know, when like Ambrose was going out for the suicide dive and Harper caught him and, you know, fucking, I think it was like a, gave him the boot or whatever. So, I mean, he had a few good moves in here. You know, nothing to get all worked. You know, you know, he had a cool move. Ambrose was doing this thing where he... You know, he, he gets hit and then goes into the ropes and then usually does a clothesline, but Harper caught him into the side slam or whatever the fuck. The winds have changed. That's what Barrett used to call it. So, I mean, he had a few good moves in there. But overall, it was boring. I mean, it wasn't good. I didn't think. You know, a lot of just ordinary moves, you know, out of these guys' is normal rep repertoires. And I'm not looking for normal, ordinary moves. I'm looking for cool, unique moves, cool counters, high spots. That's what I want to see. I didn't see enough of that in this match. So one and a half out of five stars. Then we get the New Day defeating Gold Dust, and they were saying, oh, it's Dusty on Raw. And, and I was expecting him to. You know, usually when they say, oh, this guy's coming back on Raw, usually they're out in a segment. But Dusty had, what, fucking two backstage segments? That's not a fucking return, really. I mean, come on. He was on the show for fucking five minutes. you got to be kidding me. It's kind of false advertising right there. So you get, you know, it's just fucking stupid. You know how they paint their faces. They're like six-year-old children out there. It's fucking stupid. It's fucking retarded. And they need to really get some real-ass gimmicks in this company. Instead, you got fucking Stardust painting his face purple going out there on fucking LSD and wrestling a fucking wrestling match. It's, it's fucking retarded. You know, ooh, Stardust. I mean, get the fuck out of here. Can we get some real-ass grown men in this company? So then we get... The New Day defeating Goldust and Stardust. And actually, I thought the wrestling was uh, not bad. I thought it was kind of some good wrestling in there. 
And I, it was, I thought it was kind of cool how Cody finally fucking turned on Goldust, a proper heel turn, a proper turn, whatever. So I will give this three and a half out of five stars. I mean, for what it was, it wasn't bad. So, um, you know, Cody turns finally good. You know, hopefully he can... I was hoping, oh, maybe he could snap out of this fucking stardust thing and actually become a real man. But nope, he's still stardust. So then we get this backstage segment with Cody and Dusty. And then, of course, he's still a fucking on LSD and fucking painting his face and thinking he's a fucking star or whatever. You know, and so you get fucking, he says his father is dead or whatever. I mean, just making a bunch of nonsense up. And everybody's like, oh, I'm like... I'm like, come on, he's a fucking child. He's, it's, it means nothing. It's, it's, it's confusing to me. One time, you know, one moment he's fucking blowing fucking stars out of his hand. Plastic stars. Another moment he's saying his father is dead. I don't, I don't know what's going on here. It's kind of confusing to me and I don't like it. It's, it's weird. and Not weird in a good way. It's, it's fucking childish and stupid, I think. I mean, I kind of thought it was a decent moment, I guess, when he said his father was dead. But, I mean, I, I just don't get it that much. Then we get Reigns defeating Kane in a fucking boring ass match. I mean, what do you expect? You got a washed up fucking 40 some year old in there who should have retired. Then you got a fucking 20 some year old Roman Reigns, or however old he is, who fucking can't even do more than five moves a match. A boring fucking match. I'll give it a half star out of five. Um, it, it was actually better than I expected, though, because I expected it to be zero stars. So I guess you could say it was. It exceeded expectations, but, uh. You know, still, it was a shitty fucking match. Then, I guess, you know, I missed this segment a little bit, but I kind of saw the tail end of it. Paige gets her gear, gear stolen. And again, it's like child's play right here. First, they do the spray tan, and it's like, that's the most embarrassing moment in Paige's life. You've got to be fucking joking, right? I mean, fucking squ squirting spray tan? Are you kidding me? That's your most embarrassing moment of your life? I mean, you have not lived life if that's... <laughs> you must have spent your time locked up in a basement if you... That's your most embarrassing moment of your life. I mean, come on. Can we get more mature than fucking spraying spray tan on people and stealing people's clothes? I mean, this is not mature at all. This is fucking childish. You know, uh, my, my fucking... You know, people I know who are fucking eight and nine years old wouldn't do this shit because they know it's not even funny or embarrassing at all. It's just stupid-ass retard garbage. So then Paige comes out in a fucking rosebud outfit or whatever and defeats Summer Rae. There was actually some decent wrestling in here, but I didn't feel like it was that good. Because let's face it, it's a fucking divas match between a fucking job or Summer Rae and Paige. And then they cut a one minute promo after the match. It's like they're this is a build to your fucking divas title match and they wonder why we don't like the Divas division and don't take it seriously. This is why. It's because you do a one minute promo to build to your match. It's, it's fucking bullshit. So I give this one and a half out of five stars. Then we get Rollins and Ziggler coming out to cut a promo. Which was a better fucking build to their match right here on Raw. Than, it was ten times better than any other 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 of the builds on this show. Maybe other than the fucking Reigns and Bryan. That was kind of decent. But I still even thought this one was better than Reigns and Bryan. I mean kind of. It was a good promo, you know, they said the word douche, they were going back and forth, I thought it was good. So then we get the match, I thought the match was decent. I'll give it a 2.75 out of 5 stars, it started picking up at the end. Then fucking Rowan and Ryback come out, the two fucking jobbers, whatever, who aren't that good, and I don't, and I, who I don't like. You know, I, I was hoping they would just kind of finish this match off without a DQ, but no, of course, we have to get a fucking DQ, of course, can't have a clean finish on this fucking show, so we get a DQ, and it's, you know, it kind of took away from the match, I thought, a little bit, but it was still like, some good wrestling in there, so I give it 2.75 out of 5 stars, then we get Triple H and Ric Flair cutting a promo, it kind of confusing to me, uh, it, it, it was, I, I guess, pretty good, but they're talking about, like, Ric Flair's warning about staying, and they're going off on some other topics or whatever. I don't know. I, I, I just kind of f f found it hard to follow. Maybe it was because of the fucking bullshit I watched, you know, already on Raw. I was, you know, all my energy was drained, and I was fucking zoning out, <laughs> you know. I mean, you're always zoning out while watching Raw, but, I mean, you know, I don't know. But, and then Triple H pushes Ric Flair, um, because he said that he doesn't want to see his ass on the ground again or whatever. You know, I don't know. It, it kind of just felt out of place, and it kind of felt like it wasn't 
used to the best of the potential. I don't know, but I thought it could have been done better. I mean, all you had is, you know, Ric Flair coming out there saying shit about Sting. It wasn't that entertaining, I thought. I mean, I, again, I thought it was pretty good, but I thought it could have been much better. I, I don't know. It was just didn't feel right for some reason. It felt confusing, and it didn't feel like it fit that good. Then we get Darren Young in a jobber versus the Ascension, and, you know, the Ascension starts beating him up. Titus O'Neil comes out. So I guess the primetime players are back together. And no, but no, to no reaction either. I mean, it just felt like a random ass thing to do. It felt useless. And Darren Young and Titus O'Neil would probably go on to fucking be jobbers again. I mean, this is fucking pretty much useless because they they're not gonna go anywhere uh, probably. So I mean, I thought this wasn't that good. Uh, just, just you know, kind of pointless in my opinion. Then the Usos defeat Tyson and Natalia. The wrestling wasn't that bad, but uh. I'm I'm not happy because Cesaro and Tyson Kidd, or actually Cesaro or Tyson Kidd and Natalia lost. Um, but I mean, as I said, the wrestling wasn't that horrible. I forgot to give this match a rating in my notes, so I guess I will put it in right now. I don't know, two and a half. I guess I don't fucking even remember. There you there you go, people. And if you're following along, there's two and a half out of five stars. Nothing that good. I mean, again, you, you want to build to the fucking match at the, pay, uh, at the fucking fast lane pay per view, right? But oh, let's have a mixed divas match, a mixed tag match. I mean, really, can we get something better than this? You know, maybe a promo since you haven't had one between the two teams yet, and they've been wrestling every fucking week for the past like month. Maybe maybe we could get us something unique like a promo. But no. Then we get the big show defeating Daniel Bryan by disqualification. And what a fucking horrible fucking match this was. I mean, this is up there with the big show versus Orton at Survivor Series uh, 2013. Just a fucking terrible ass match. I mean, you got the big show in there, you know, and, and Daniel Bryan. And they're doing submissions that are like two or three minutes long. And it's like, come on, guys. Pick up the pace. You know, this isn't fucking supposed to put us to sleep, is it? Or are you trying to put us to sleep? You know... I didn't get a lot of sleep last night, but I'm not looking to fall asleep during the show, right? WWE, you know, it's just fucking horrible. Why is the Big Show in the main event? He's a fucking big, fat ass, 450 fucking pounds, 40-some years old. Why is he in the main event? Don't you want younger talent? Don't you want to promote younger talent like Ambrose, Wyatt, Ziggler, Cesaro? I could go on and on. But no, let's put fucking, uh, fucking Big Show and Kane in the main events. Yeah, great idea. Great fucking idea. You know, it just makes no sense. It's illogical to have Big Show even still in the company in a prominent part of Monday Night Raw. And then we get a little brawl there at the end. I mean, it wasn't horrible, but it was kind of stupid as well. I mean, all you had was them fucking kicking each other, rolling around on each other, punching, and, you know, running around the ring a little bit. I mean, was there a few decent spots in the brawl? I mean, yeah, I guess so. But I thought it could have been much better. I thought it could have been... You know, a lot of, uh, maybe some hardcore, you know, Brian used a chair like twice or whatever. You know, I thought it could have been a better brawl though. I mean, you're, this is your fucking main event. Or at least one of the biggest matches on the card. You know, have some, you know, a kick-ass fucking brawl where you're, you know, some cool high spots and cool extreme moments. But no, it's just kind of a typical brawl. Just a, an alright brawl. You know, uh, and by the way, that match beforehand fucking sucked, too. I already said that, but it's just, you know, you want to go off Raw, you know, end Raw with a bang. You know, go home show to the pay-per-view. You don't want to end it with fucking Big Show versus Daniel Bryan. What a fucking horrible. Whoever put that, who's that whoever idea that was, deserves to be fucking fired. You know, a lot of these, the whole creative team, for the most part, probably, probably deserves to be fired for all the retarded ideas. I could fucking make a fucking hour video on... Just the fucking horrible things that the creative team has done. The, the nonsensical things the creative team has done. So overall, the show wasn't that good. I mean, you had a few good things on there. So I will give it 3.25 3, 3 out of 10 stars. I was looking for more on a go-home show. They should have built up the pay-per-view much better. It fucking, the build fucking sucked. And I, I don't know how the pay-per-view will be, but the build fucking sucked. And, and the show wasn't that, that hot either. As usual. So there you go, people. There's your Monday night. Or you know what I like to call it now? The mundane. You know, mundane. Mundane Monday Night Raw <laughs> review. So there you go, people.